Testament reading for today comes from the book of Mark, chapter 7, verses 1 through 8, and verses 14 through 23. Now when the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around him, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with the five hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all of the Jews do not eat unless they throw and wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with the fire of hands? He said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about the hypocrites, as it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines, you abandon the commitment of God and hold to human tradition. Then he said to them, oh, let me skip down, I said I was going to skip, let me skip down. Then he called the crowd again and said to them, listen to me all of you and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile. When he had left the crowd and entered the house, his disciples asked him about the parable. He said to them, Then do you also fail to understand? Do you not see that whatever goes into a person from outside cannot defile, since it enters not the heart but the stomach, and goes out into the sewer? Thus he declared all foods clean. And he said, It is what comes out of a person that defiles, for it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come, fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from within, and they defile the person. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. And Thanks be to God. God. And let us go to God in prayer. Gracious God, open our hearts and our minds this day, so that we hear your word and put your word into practice. Now and always. Amen. For many years, capitalism has been alive and well because there is big money to be made in diet. And there always seems to be some new fad, some new program, some new way to lose lots of weight, lose lots of weight fast, and keep lots of weight off forever. Some of the big players in the diet game are the Atkins diet, the South Beach diet, the Zolan diet, the Paleo diet, and of course all the programs that go with it, Weight Watchers, Jenny Craig, Nutrisystem, Slim Fats, and so on and so on. Well, I have heard of yet of another diet. If you stick to the meal plan in this diet, you are guaranteed to lose lots of weight. So here is a typical day's menu, breakfast, half a grapefruit, one slice whole wheat toast, eight ounces skim milk. Lunch, four ounces lean broiled chicken breast, one cup steamed zucchini, one Oreo cookie, pear tea. Mid-afternoon snack, eat the rest of the Oreo cookies. <laughs> one quart Rocky Road ice cream, one jar hot fudge. Dinner, two loaves garlic bread, one large pepperoni pizza with cheese baked into the crust, a large pitcher of root beer, two sticker bars, entire frozen cheesecake, do not wait for it to thaw. <laughs> Diet instructions. If no one sees you eat, the food has no calories. If you drink a diet soda with a candy bar, they cancel each other out. If you break cookies in half, they are less fattening because when broken, this will cause calorie leakage. <laughs> Always eat chocolate items in pairs. It allows for even calorie distribution to your hips. If you hang out with people who are heavier than you, you will be thinner. When you go to the movies, none of these calories count because it's all part of the entertainment experience. 
what we eat and don't eat, how we interpret and follow instructions, how we are viewed by others. They are all talked about in this morning's Bible passage. Jesus is being accused of allowing his disciples to disregard rituals and rules pertaining to hand washing and the eating of clean and unclean foods. The, Pharisee, the Pharisees observed that the disciples were not following the cleansing rituals prior to eating food, and so what they put in their body was unclean. And I love Jesus' response to this situation. He reminds everyone that a pure and right life begins with our relationship with God. Sometimes the Pharisees needed help with that. Jesus addresses today two areas of concern. First, he accuses the Pharisees of being hypocritical. He does this by quoting Isaiah 29, where Isaiah tells the people of God that they honor God with their lips, but not with their hearts. Here is what William Barclay says about hypocrisy. The word, says Barclay, has an interesting and revealing history. It began by meaning simply one who answers. It went on from there to mean one who answers in a dialogue or in a conversation. That is to say, an actor. And finally, it was a word that meant not simply an actor on the stage, but one whose whole life is a piece of acting without any sincerity behind it all. The Pharisees described the leaders in Jesus' time viewed religion as a legal thing. They carried out certain rules and regulations in public for all to see, but then they did not themselves live that way in their own relationship with God. They wanted to appear holy and they wanted to increase their prestige and their status. Now, this behavior is bad when it causes our needs to increase and it causes our relationship with God to decrease. You might have noticed, I hope you have, that I tend to talk a lot about the importance of living a God-centered life. Now, I find this vital to Christianity because if God is not in the center of our lives, then other harmful things will fill that void. And that is where hypocrisy can be a real danger. My life application commentary says that three behaviors can turn us into hypocrites. And here they are. One, we pay more attention to reputation than we do to character. Two, we practice religion, but our hearts remain distant from God. And three, we emphasize our own virtues, and we focus on the sin of others. Now, anytime you catch yourself behaving in this way, my advice is turn your life around. In other words, pay more attention to character than you do reputation. Get your heart right with God before you practice anything, including religion, and focus on your own sins and lift up the virtues in other people. When our hearts are in tune with God, we will gain insight and wisdom and self-worth. And we do that simply by paying attention to God's Spirit, by loving God's Son, by listening for God's voice. Being in a right relationship with the living Christ means that our hearts need to be right with God. And that brings us to the second area of concern, the unclean heart. Jesus had been arguing with the leaders about outward practices, about following traditions, about focusing too much on the rules of the law, and not enough attention to be given to following God. And he drives us his point home by nullifying one of the most sacred traditions that the Jewish nation followed. The rules of what is clean and unclean, what you can and can't put in your body. The Pharisees had taken God's holy laws and they had, had, they had added hundreds and hundreds of their own petty rules and regulations. In Leviticus there are pages and pages and pages of instructions about which foods are clean and unclean specific rights in regards to hand washing, definitive ways in which one could and could not wash plates and cups and kettles and so on. This is how in their minds a person got into heaven. 
Jesus came along and said, look, you're making all of this way too hard. Nothing that you put into your body is unclean, because whatever we need, the body processes what it needs, and what it doesn't need, the body simply gets rid of. And Barclay says, uncleanliness has nothing to do with what a person takes into their body, but has everything to do with what comes out of a person's heart. Now there are exceptions and there are special cases, but for the most part, we are given this freedom of choice. We choose, we decide, we determine to be good or bad, sinful or righteous, faithful or untrue. And hopefully we will make a concerted effort every day to choose God. And yet, we still choose things from the heart that can make us say and do such things. Well, in today's reading, Jesus says, it is what comes out of a person that defiles. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come. Sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, wickedness, deceit, recklessness, envy, slander, pride, and folly. All these evil things come from within, and they defile the person. That was from today's reading. Now, I have some concerns about this list. It's long. Some of the items on it are really bad. Some of the items on it are really easy to commit. Some of the items on this list we commit over and over and over again. And because of all of that, it sometimes feels like we're fighting a losing battle. We can be faithful to God and still do sinful things. We can do everything right and still bad things happen. We can dedicate our lives to God and still evil prevails and the innocent suffer. I have always taken great comfort in the words of one of my seminary professors. He says, you have to let God be God. Stop trying to make God do and be what you think is the right thing. Let God be God and trust God in the process. Now God is mysterious and complex. And sometimes we don't understand what God is or what God is not doing. But God is also good and loving and kind and forgiving and close by and listening. And no matter what we think and what is happening in the world, God is there. The living Christ is there. God's Holy Spirit is there. Inside of us, nudging, guiding, and nurturing. The comfort I have in this is, it's not just evil intentions that come from our hearts, but also the fruits of the Spirit that come from our hearts. For in us is love and joy, peace and patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And with God's help, those are the things that can fill our hearts. There is an old story called The Frail Old Man. I don't know if you've heard it. It's in, it comes out in many different countries to tell this story in many different traditions. And surprisingly enough, the story is about a frail old man. It's about a man who is at that age where he can't, it's difficult for him to take care of himself in the way that he used to be able to do. His eyesight was failing. His, he wasn't steady on his feet. Couldn't remember and think and act as quickly as he used to. His hand shook all the time. So he got to the stage where he had to move in with his son, his son's wife, and their little boy. And at first, everything was okay. But here's what happened the, the, on the very first night when the man had dinner at his son's table. His eyesight isn't good, so he kept knocking over the salt and pepper and spilling things on the tablecloth. He, every time he reached for his glass of milk or juice, his hand shook so much that all the stuff spilled out the top of the glass. He wasn't steady, he didn't react as quickly, so things fell on the floor and things got dropped. 
And that's what the dinner table experience was like with this old man. And after a while, the son came to his wife and he says, I, 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 can't, I can't take this. We, we need to come up with a solution. My solace in the day is the time that we spend together at dinner. And this is making it unbearable. And the wife agreed something had to be done. So they set up a card table and they put it in the corner of the dining room. I mean, they put grandpa at the card table. And because he spills things, and because he breaks things, and because he's not quick, they got wooden cups and wooden bowls and wooden utensils, and they gave it to Grandpa. And they put it in the corner, and then their dinner experience became good again. And if they had bothered to look over in the corner at Grandfather, Grandpa each night, they would see a tear coming down in his eyes, because he wasn't with his family. But all was good for the dinner experience. And one day the dad came home and he comes home, he walks in the kitchen, in the middle of the kitchen floor is a little boy and he's got some glue and some markers and some crayons and some wood and he's playing on the floor and his father says, what you doing buddy? And he says, I'm building wooden cups and plates for when I grow up and can serve you and mom. The boy went on playing. The mother and father, when hearing this, both burst into tears and realized that they had made a terrible mistake. And so the son went over to his father, he took him by the hand, he walked him over to the dinner table, sat him down, and for the rest of their days, dinner once, be once again became the highlight of the day. And the funny thing is, the more they listened to and accepted and were patient with the old man, the more they did that, the less they seemed to be bothered by things being spilled and things being dropped on the floor and tablecloths being dirty. We are given this wonderful organ in our bodies, our hearts. And with those hearts, we can do things that make other people feel terrible. And we can do things that break people down. And we can do things that make people sad. Just like the parents did in the story, even with the best of intentions. And with this heart, we can also do amazing things, like the little boy shows us in the story. We can, our hearts can be full of love and patience and acceptance and graciousness and forgiveness. And as I said in the sermon, we get to choose that freedom of choice of how we're going to live. I'm going to choose to follow the fruits of the Spirit. Not because I'm your pastor and they don't you don't pay me to, but because my heart and the way I live for God tells me to. And that's why we come here, and that's why we are God's children. Let us Gracious God, be with us in all that we do. Help us to live our lives with hearts that are pure and full of your love. Now and always.